Hi, it's Chris Watkin here, and I'm joined by Ellie Reese, who is an estate agent extraordinaire from London, and she owns her own estate agency, which is called Brickworks. Thanks for joining me today, Ellie. Thank you so much for having me. The first question I want to ask you is, my, it is my understanding that you became an estate agent because you went on a viewing and fell in love with the, with the, with the person showing you around. <laughs> Talk to me. I mean, come on, boys, you know, going on. A, it's I mean, so embarrassing. Imagine what my friend said. Well, there you go. So you were looking around a house. Yeah. And this good looking, this good looking man came around and showed you around. And you think to yourself, yeah. I mean, talk about, buy, not, it's, you're supposed to buy the property, not, not the person showing you around. I was looking on behalf of my mum and uh, I was an artist at the time, practicing artist and a lecturer. Okay. Self-employed and so had a very academic background. And my mum had sold the family home and she was looking for an investment. And I said, this area of London is a really good place to look. Okay. And my friend and I pitched up. And I mean, it did help that he was handsome. He is handsome. Okay. And, um, but he was late, okay. I noted. Um, but not particularly estate agent-y. Okay. And I thought, okay, this guy is, I don't know. There was definitely a meeting of minds and... Uh, Je ne sais quoi. And that was it, really. Okay, so you went, so you did a viewing. Yeah. Did, 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 was there a spark in the room when he was showing you around? <laughs> yeah, there was. Okay. So, and he, wait, he went to great lengths um, to sort of protest about how he had fallen into a state agency and he wasn't really an estate agent and it wasn't really his dream to be oh, an estate agent. Okay. And, you know, his background was, okay. and he'd studied here and okay. all this kind of did stuff. Did you ask him on a date? Or I did. did. He... You asked him on a I date. I did. Was he young, free, and single, and ready to mingle at the time? I asked him if he was straight and single, and if he was, did he want to go for a drink? But that no, my mum wasn't interested in buying the house. Okay. And the story goes, but you would have to believe the office that he was working at at the time, which is quite a large London corporate of some okay. stature. Okay. Um, that he went back to the office and said, "I've just met the woman I'm going to marry." Okay. To his so, colleagues. So you went out on the first date. Yeah. Okay. Was that nice? Yeah, it was good. Good. Okay. And then things blossomed. But I mean, that, that's great. You know, Very I, quickly. I, I, uh, I met my wife when we were both working for estate agents. So why does a, why does a college lecturer and, and freelance <laughs> artist all of a sudden decide? Well, I mean, you know, he's a good looking lad. But why all of a sudden did you then decide you wanted to become an estate agent? I think that um, it became clear very quickly that he was unhappy um, within the culture of a state agency okay. as it was and currently is predominantly. And the hours um, weren't great. And he felt that what he was doing didn't necessarily reflect his values or his politics. Okay. And what I was doing did more accurate, accurately reflect his values and his politics. And I came from a completely different industry. Okay. I came from the arts. I came from third sector and not for profit, which is um, non, usually non-profit motivated. So there isn't this kind of transactional sales target driven uh, approach. And I think he was just more like that as a person. Okay but very good at the job okay so how long had you been going out with each other before you decided that you said hey why don't we set our own estate agency up yeah good question it sounds really pompous i know but bear with me we actually wrote a manifesto we were kind of like was this under the influence <laughs> of alcohol always excellent good stuff um, and also sauvignon blanc i see <laughs> i'd been away Rosé. I'd, I'd been away and I was in New York and I got pregnant very quickly. So we actually had, I mean, really quickly, within 12 weeks. Okay. You weren't hanging about. No. Yeah. So our priorities changed in that we had to kind of formalise um, a stable and secure setup and establish the way that our relationship would be. And that included work. And I always wanted to work and I never wanted to be a stay-at-home mum and he didn't want to be a stay-at-home parent either. And 
the way that work was for him was making him miserable and I couldn't really go back to teaching in the same way. I couldn't really practice in the same way. My practice involved a lot of international travel. You can't really do that with kids, okay? So he said, look, I'm going to quit or why don't we start something that pulls your expertise and your experience from somewhere completely different with a completely different approach and my experience of and understanding of the industry from the inside and maybe maybe something really exciting and potentially pioneering could happen here um and and it became sort of quite combustible quite quickly i think and that just gave us momentum and then we talked to lots of people and everyone we spoke to said just do it and that was six years ago yeah, six and a half years ago, seven Sorry. years ago, something like that. Okay, so is there anything you'd have done differently that now you've got in the, with the power of hindsight? Gosh, that is a really good one. Um, I would have got myself um, a female mentor and I would have done it really quickly and really early on. There aren't many. I would have had slim pickings, but I've sort of had to forge the path myself with little support and of course I'm not going I wasn't going in at a junior role I went in okay. running running the business does it make a difference that it was a, a another female or woman sorry um mentor right. so um, you have changed me on that one <laughs> I'm going to kick you every time you say female okay. or lady right. um and buy you a beer every time you say woman okay. um no, not necessarily, but it would have had to have been somebody who's incredibly in tune with how male dominated the industry is and how much of that is invisible and unconscious. Um, and we so are some, going to talk about that in other videos. Yeah, we are. But someone like Simon Ledbetter, who, although he's a man, um, is incredibly astute and very aware. Mm, switched on guy. Totally. In that particular area as well. But I mean, I think a woman would have been great too, but I think I would have liked some more handholding because of course Rex was fantastic and I learned so much about state agency via osmosis and just listening to him talk and watching him work. And of course, as you know, you learn a lot on the job. I think quite yeah. a lot of people fall into agency, don't they? they so do. it's a sort of baptism of fire. Um, but yes, having somebody lead. And what's been the best bit in the last six and a half years? Oh, it's so rewarding. It's okay. so rewarding. Okay. And having a voice within the industry um, as a woman in a really male dominated culture, um, I find really exciting. I've always been interested in gender studies um, and gender inequality because it's a societal problem mm -hmm. and it's not unique to a state agency. It's just particularly bad in a state agency. And again, we're going to go through this in a lot more detail in other videos, but what would your message be to any women estate agents who are employed at the moment about who are worried about making that move? What would your message be to those? To setting up on their own. Mm. Um, believe in yourself, find somebody else who believes in you, create a support system, set out your terms and do it your way. Don't be persuaded that there's only one way of doing a state agency, which is ostensibly male, because there are more than one ways to skin a cat. And believe, believe in that, I think. Well, in the uh, rest of the videos, we're going to talk about the, the gender pay gap. We're going to talk about the lack of senior uh, women in senior roles in the state agency um, and the other issues that, that women have in the state agency, plus some other topics that we're going to talk about. So thank you for your time today and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next set of videos, which will be on YouTube. Uh, we'll check those out. Thanks very much. Pleasure.